which you may be able to see behind me, a blue bus. Behind that is the Park Inn Hotel. It's been accommodating asylum seekers and refugees during the coronavirus lockdown. And today, at lunchtime, it witnessed the horrors of a multiple stabbing and a police shooting. The moment armed police entered a hotel housing asylum seekers and refugees as they were fleeing the building. This is in the centre of Glasgow, just minutes after people were stabbed inside. Sorry. Yeah, down on, on the left-hand left. side. Yeah. Well, Matthew Nesbitt from offices opposite the hotel Thank you. witnessed the panic as events unfolded. He looked shocked. That's pretty shocking to see, uh, to see people lose their lives. It's different when you see it in TV or in films, but yes. to see it in person, it's heartbreaking. What did you see? Okay. We, were, we were working uh, just above the incident, about literally directly above the whole thing. Uh, and we saw, um, we heard screaming, we were, we're in, in the office and we heard the commotion, so we went to the window and looked out and we saw a lot of panic and we saw someone on the steps. Uh, I wasn't too sure what happened. I thought maybe they were unconscious. Or, but by the time we got down the steps, uh, we could see that person was dead. Around six are injured, including a police officer who is said to be critical but stable. The suspected attacker was shot dead by a firearms officer inside the building. Police Scotland say this is not being treated as a terrorist incident. Police responded to a report of an incident at the Park Inn Hotel in West George Street, Glasgow, at 12.50 p.m. today. Officers were on the scene within two minutes and armed officers shortly afterwards, and the incident was quickly contained. A man was shot by armed police and has subsequently died. Six other men are in hospital for treatment, including a 42-year-old police officer who is in a critical but stable condition. The officer's family are aware and being supported. The other men in hospital are aged 17, 18, 20, 38 and 53. The hotel was a refuge mainly for migrants seeking asylum. During the Covid lockdown there had been some disquiet among the residents about conditions and the fear of eviction when the restrictions are lifted. Demonstrations have recently led to clashes with right-wing supporters. Clearly there have been uh, some tensions in Glasgow as there have been in other parts of the UK in recent times but I, I want to send a message to people across Glasgow and across Scotland when dreadful things like this happen, uh, they shock all of us to our core but above all they should remind us of what unites us and, and not what divides us. Two investigations are now underway, first into the attack itself and the second into the shooting. The first time in decades where someone has been shot dead by police in Scotland. Well, joining me now is the very Reverend Kelvin Holsworth, Provost of St Mary's Cathedral in Glasgow. Things like this just don't happen in Glasgow, indeed in Scotland, very much at all. So people will be very shocked. They're very shocked indeed. Uh, the, the, the feeling in Glasgow is just a, of, of horror that this could happen. Uh, we're not used to this kind of thing and this is such a welcoming city for so many refugees and asylum seekers, so it is very unexpected. Now, I gather you've, you've worked with the asylum seeker and refugee community in the city. I mean, what can you tell us about the tensions that have been reported that the First Minister uh, referred to herself? Um, during this time in which people have been moved out of the flats that they were living in and made to go into these hotels. There has been a lot of anxiety about what would happen to people once the... Uh, people have been moved into various pieces of places of safe accommodation during the Covid crisis and there's been a lot of anxiety about what would happen at the end of that and also people fearing evictions. Um, and these are people who are frightened anyway, these are people who have come from all around the world, from across Europe and beyond, looking for a place of safety. So they're, they're often a very, uh, they're very tense people, they're very anxious people, and they're looking for somewhere to settle. And, and that, that inevitably leads to tension when that's threatened. Had you, had you heard about tension in the hotels themselves? I mean, some, some reports have said that 
you know, people felt their freedoms had been taken away to some degree and they were likening them to prisons. And the residents of that hotel, Jonathan... Well, I don't know whether they're like, to, like, like prisons, it's hard to say. Uh, I've not been in any of these hotels. Uh, but I know that they have been fairly crowded uh, and I know that people have been quite anxious. Uh, I mean, all of us have felt uh, as though we've been in prisons during lockdown. All of us have felt as though we couldn't uh, move about. Um, so it's understandable, I think, that any uh, community that's confined in fairly close quarters is going to feel very anxious at the moment. There's quite a lesson today, really, looking across social media and the, and the, and the, you know, the broadcast media, a sort of rumour of what had actually happened uh, and what might have been the motive behind it turned out to be quite wrong within a, a matter of hours. What, what do you think the lessons are? Well, uh, the lessons are don't tweet unless you know uh, what's true. Uh, but then that's a lesson for many days, not just today. Um, I think that people react very quickly to anything with uh, trigger issues, issues around asylum, uh, issues around poverty, um, issues around any kind of tension like that. People tend to want to write into the script their own uh, feelings about that. Uh, and, and today's an obvious lesson to, to wait and see and, and wait and try and find out the truth.